Hi everyone, I'm here today with my good friend Rosemary Ferguson, um, who we've known for yeah, quite a few years. <laughs> um, I met Rose when Rose was a model and I was doing her hair a lot. Tell us what you do, Rose. What the hell do you do, Rose? What the hell do I do yeah. on a day to day? So yeah. I qualify I qualified as a nutritionist about fifteen years ago. And then I went on and did some I did three years of functional medicine. And then I just finished my master's in advanced nutrition research and practice. So, and then I have a clinic. I do a bit of writing, but in my clinic, I see people. And the thing that's great about my clinic is you never know what's coming through the door. So actually, it's always I. Every time that I think, oh, I've got I've too much. I don't have enough time for clinic. It's actually what really grounds me and keeps me on my toes. Because you have to be on point for these people. They're coming asking for your help and you need to know what the hell you're talking about. So that's what I do. And when I work with people, I look at everything. I look at what they do on a day-to-day, -day. I look at what they eat, I look at their bowel. We talk a lot about bowel movements in my clinic. But it's everything, so it's not just coming in and talking about, okay, they come in with a goal that they want to achieve, whether it's weight loss or thyroid, you know, whatever, or energy, energy is a big one. I know from, I mean, from years of work, that there is a, a definite, definite, physical and mental connection with yeah. you and your hair. It's all about um, what goes on in the inside, kind of having an effect on what's on the outside. Yeah. You know, the health of your hair is an expression of what's going on inside, I would say, and that is emotional, physical, and definitely what you feel able to do. Do you get a lot of hair questions? So I get a lot of hair and skin. I suppose hair, when I'm thinking about hair, you don't just treat, you don't just go, oh, well, I'll give you some biotin. You know, it's like, why have you got thin hair? Why is your hair thin? Or why is it breaking? Or why is it dull? The reason I mention it with skin is because often when someone's got dull hair, they often have dull skin. There are lots of reasons for it. One could be sort of sluggish liver. If someone's very bogged down, if they're, they're what we call toxic load, is very high, whether that's from booze, stress, eating rubbish, traveling too much, lack of sleep. You know, there are lots of reasons. So you look at the whole picture. Um, I guess one of the, the biggies when it comes to thinning hair would be an immediate go-to. There are a few. One would be hyperthyroid, one would be hypothyroid, so high thyroid or low. Um, anemia is quite a big one. And other supplements you can take? Supplement-wise, there are, there are lots of things you can do, depending on what the cause of it is. So for something like thyroid, you would be looking at things like selenium and zinc. Um, but you could also get those in your foods. Also iodine, actually, which you, you don't need very much iodine, but... Um, you know, you can get that from seaweed, you can even get it. If you live by the sea, you probably get enough iodine just from the air. Things like selenium you get from Brazil nuts, I would say is the number one. Oh, I used to love a chocolate Brazil at Brazil Christmas, Brazil. yeah. Exactly. I'm allergic to nuts. Are I you? developed a nut allergy, a serious anaphylactic shock. Um, oh. God, when I was about 50 at the shows in Milan, and we were having some nuts in the bar, <laughs> and I ended up exploding no. sort of that size, bursting mm -hmm. out of my shirt and carted off in an ambulance. Uh, you know, I, because I had no idea, but I could, I could really smell strong. It, it, it heightened, I had heightened senses to nuts. I, that's why I knew it was the nuts. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Um, yeah, that was, mm -hmm. so I haven't eaten, I mean, and I was talking yesterday, I absolutely love nuts. I love them and I look at them sometimes think, no, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Things like um, omega 3s are really good, so good fats, again, for anti inflammatory, thinking about reducing inflammation. Um, vitamin D is really important for hair cycles. If you're living in somewhere that doesn't get much sunlight, like the UK, um, then you definitely need to be supplementing vitamin D, and lots and lots and lots of people don't, and lots of people are deficient. I do one of those. Um sprays under my tongue every morning yeah. with vitamin D. Yeah, so I do D and B12. Tongue. Tongue is really important yeah. for too. Yeah, yeah. great. Exactly. I mean, obviously not for my hair, but... but, but, but um, I mean, yeah. vitamin D is important for everything, but as we're talking about hair cycles, <laughs> then it's important for that. <laughs> when we're talking about iron, because anemia is a big cause yeah, okay. of hair loss, actually. Right. So, and when you take it, or well, you can get iron, obviously, from red meat, lentils, spinach, um, but you should you, you should actually make sure you're taking vitamin C sauce with it. So tomatoes would be something, or you know something with a bit of vitamin C, and you get vitamin C in spinach. But it helps to absorb the iron. Um, and usually, if you're supplementing iron, it will usually come with some vitamin C in it because it helps it to be absorbed in the body. Um, but yeah, anemia is another thing. And also, so if you had say low energy and your hair was really poor and you noticed a bit of lacklustre in the skin and you were very pale 
then anemia might be something we should look at. Rose, it's been a pleasure. Oh, it's been so lovely. Lovely to see you always. Thank you for having me. Thank you.